Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard and Middle-earth. We are back here with Grifflet today. Grifflet has been uh, quietly, you know, imitating a ranger over these last couple weeks. Uh, namely, sitting around a campfire and not doing very much. Um, uh, his favorite ranger is this guy over here who looks like he's been searching for something in that patch of grass for really a very long time. Um, but I have to say, at least he's, you know, looking busy compared to uh, these other chaps who are really just not even doing so much. Uh, one also can't help but wonder um, how they decide who gets to sleep in the two bedrolls, right? There are three of them here uh, and a two-man tent. Uh, so uh, Grifflet was kind of wondering, like, you know, does it... Uh, do they draw straws? Is there some... Do they fight? Uh, is it a seniority thing? Um, is it just like they're so vigilant that only two of them ever sleep at a time and the third one is always sitting there tapping his foot <laughs> and not doing much of anything else? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. These are the kinds of things that Grifflet wonders about. He also wondered how exactly... No, no, no. Not how. Why? Exactly. They brought two such enormous barrels with them. I mean, look at the size of these barrels, right? I mean, these barrels obviously are large to a hobbit, but even to a man, they would be over shoulder high and huge, right? These are, um, these are not even barrels as much as like, uh, uh, you know, they're more like, well, do they still use the word in modern English? A ton? Um, it's a Middle English word, I know. Uh, but uh, you know, T O T O N N E is how it was uh, uh, how it was spelled in in uh, in Middle English. Um, yeah, tons. Is it T U N? We use that word still. Okay, I'm not always I'm not always sure uh, uh, the words that have survived or not. Um, yeah, I knew they're huge. They're huge. Uh, anyway, and so it just seems a little odd. I mean, do they backpack them in? But again, like you'd think with a little camp like this, right? Why would you? I mean, barrels of that size. Gosh. But anyway, we are here uh, both because we have been uh, uh, sent here uh, by Cyrodon, who said we, we should perhaps find a more secret way uh, uh, down into uh, Dunland. And so I'm supposed to be asking him about that. But at the same time, we also found that little pair of boots of, uh, of suspiciously... Um, suspiciously uh, 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 hobbit-sized boots, uh, which we're supposed to ask about, the Little Wonders quest line. So um, I think we have both of those things to talk about here before we head back uh, to Hlanuk and, uh, and talk to Wadu's father and return him his ancient sword. Uh, so, okay, let's see. What's a more secret way? Yeah. Our quest is dire. Your quest is dire. I know. That's why we're all sitting around a campfire thinking about it so hard. Cyrodon sent me to aid you. He so did. Um, these myriad gorges are a mystery to be unraveled. Your aid will be greatly appreciated. Oh, good. No, happy to help. Always happy to perform any t task, howsoever menial. Okay, little wonders. May the Valar grant us swift passage through these lands. Okay, this belongs to no child, much less a Dunlending. This most certainly belongs to a hobbit. The mystery, I'm afraid, has deepened. What the mystery of the gorges? Our success lies in secrecy. Okay. Will you aid us? Halflings in the hills! It is said that long ago, when the hobbits first crossed the Misty Mountains in the east, that some of the stores settled here in Enidwyth, but it has also been long believed that they were wiped out during the time of the plague. This proves otherwise to me. Will you seek out these hobbits? It may be that in these dark times they should be encouraged to continue their journey and rejoin their kindred in the Shire. Darkness is quickly falling across this land. Yeah, well, we certainly wouldn't want, um, uh, 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 you know, Saruman to come in and start recruiting among the hobbits, right? That'd, that'd be awful. It's actually a really interesting thought question, isn't it? Um, the idea that there are still settlements of, of you know, stores that, that stayed in Enderbite, this seems to me perfectly plausible. Um especially given what we see of the rather independent and uh, 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 generally anarchic nature of hobbits and the you know, political structure of hobbits. Anarchic in the sense of each one running its own life and its own homestead and not having really strong 
you know, bonds to a uh, to a lord, not really living in any kind of a monarchical situation, or even really an oligarchical situation. They don't elect a congress or something like that. Um, I mean, really, the Shire technically has a thane and it technically has a mayor, but the mayor doesn't do much and the, the sheriffs don't do much and every hobbit pretty much runs his own affairs. Each family pretty much runs its own affairs at the very least. Um, given that and assuming that that kind of political structure was you know, similar back in the older days, it hardly seems unlikely that as the hobbits were working their way across Eriador, ultimately ending up in the Shire, you know, in Breland and then from there to the Shire, uh, that uh, you know that some of them would just be like, "Hey, we like it here. Y'all go ahead. We're gonna stay here," and that the others would have gone on without any, you know, without too much concern or you know trying to compel them to come with them. So as I said, a settlement of hobbits here. This seems to be perfectly plausible. But then here's the interesting thought experiment, right? Um, we don't know for sure. Tolkien says almost nothing about Enidwyth, as I've said before. So we don't know if there was actually a, a group of hobbits settled here. If there were. And Saruman found out, what would he do? What would Saruman's actions be? We know Saruman to be very interested <clears throat> in hobbits and the Shire. Not only, <clears throat> not only, of course, because he has reason to suspect that the One Ring uh, was in their possession, but it's more than that, right? As evidenced by his trade with them and his beginning to smoke uh, pipeweed. And Tolkien himself explains that he kind of retcons this uh, in Unfinished Tales. Unfinished Tales, by the way, is like uh, some of the places where you can see Tolkien's retcon work in, uh, in really high gear. Uh, because, of course, almost all of Unfinished Tales... Mm, no, all of Unfinished Tales. Um, I don't think there are any exceptions to this. <clears throat> were written after the publication of The Lord of the Rings. Well, okay, no. After the composition of The Lord of the Rings. Let me say that. Many of them written after the publication. All of them, I believe, written after the composition of The Lord of the Rings. There was, of course, a delay of several years between when he finished writing it and when it actually came out in print. Um, so, uh, anyway, so, um, uh, and yeah, Phil, this is exactly why what Lotho Pimple tried to do was so countercultural, right? And why the hobbits reacted with outrage to, you know, Lotho setting himself up as, as the chief um, or the boss. But 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 it wasn't just outrage, right? Outrage would have been, you know, a society in which there was a ruler, but that ruler's position was being usurped by an unrightful ruler might have immediately gone to outrage, right? But in a society like the Shire, where they're not even used to any kind of central leadership like that, uh, it seems that a lot of the hobbits responded as much with puzzlement as with outrage, um, the outrage only began when they started gathering and sharing and all that kind of thing. But anyway, anyway. Um, but so back to my other question. What would he? Oh, unfinished tales. I'm going back down the uh, the the breadcrumb trail of my wandering thought here. Um, so, uh, un, in unfinished tales, he's retconning a whole bunch of things. Right? He's sort of answering questions that have come up. He's developing ideas that were underdeveloped in the stories untold stories that he was really interested in telling, such as the disaster of the Gladden Fields, for instance, where he gives the narrative from Isildur's point of view, pretty much, um, of what happened at the Gladden Fields uh, uh, when Isildur lost the ring. And it does not, by the way, completely agree with the things that are said in the published Lord of the Rings. There are some things that are kind of tweaked from it, or rather it's a new version of the story, which apparently the person who composed The Lord of the Rings didn't have access to, right? That's the, the sort of the fictional frame of the whole thing. Um, oh, by the way, see, I, I uh, got my cast off. I just have a splint now. Much better, much better. I can do two thumbs up much more effectively now. Uh, anyway, so, so he was doing all this retconning in Unfinished Tales, and one of the things that he was retconning was Saruman and Saruman's interest in the Shire. And so he went back in the essay on the Astari, uh, on the wizards, um, he did a lot of talking about uh, Gandalf and Saruman's relationship from earlier on, and how Saruman observed Gandalf's interest in the Shire, and he couldn't understand it. And it was, it was really interesting, because one of the things, of course, that Tolkien says is that... Um, one of the things which sort of um, betrays the difference in temperament and outlook between Gandalf and uh, and Saruman is the fact that Gandalf 
was interested in the Shire folk, took an interest in the Shire folk for, I won't say completely benevolent purposes, um, but just because he was interested in them, because they appealed to him, um, because, you know, he took an interest in them, not, and not even because primarily they needed help, but because he wanted to learn more about them, and because he came to admire and respect them the more he got to know them. Saruman saw from the outside, saw, perceived Gandalf's interest in the Shire folk, and concluded that there must be something in it, right? That, like, there must be something in it for Gandalf. Uh, there must be some deep cunning underlying Gandalf's interest in the Shire, and so he begins to take an interest in the Shire to try to see what the big deal was, right, and what was behind it. Um, and for this reason, he even develops the habit of smoking, although, uh, smoking pipeweed, even though he, um, uh, he still criticizes Gandalf in public, uh, for smoking. Uh, so anyway, so so Tolkien works out some of those dynamics between Gandalf and Saruman, and in particular, Saruman's interest in the Shire. So Gandalf, of course, obviously is interested in the Shire long before the One Ring comes into the picture, back in his connection with the old Took, right? And stuff several, you know, a couple generations back before Bilbo. Um, Saruman's also, Saruman's interest in the Shire also predates his specific suspicions about the One Ring. Um... So, given that, right, so looking at the, uh, the Enidwyth Hobbit settlement from the point of view of the essay of the Astari, right, from the point of view of what Tolkien fleshes out about Saruman's interest in hobbits, I return to the, uh, uh, to the question, what would Saruman have done? Here he's recruiting, right? His emissaries are going through Enidwife. He's leaning on people. He's bribing people. He's trying to recruit the Dunlendings uh, uh, into his army so that they can fight uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Rohirrim, right? And presumably also so that he can rival Mordor when the time comes, right? Um, as, as clearly it must have been Saruman's plan. Saruman is not a faithful servant of Sauron, so it must have been his hope that the armies of the West would serve a great enough obstacle to Sauron that he would at least be greatly weakened and that he, Saruman, uh, could uh, come up against him. And by the way, the way that we see this happening in Lodro makes that idea far more plausible. In the book, it sounds like Saruman is just fooling himself, right? Like he's just kind of a moron to think that he could possibly rival not only, you know, the King of the Mark, but Sauron himself, right? That he's just dumb and fooling himself. What we see in the game is really, really interesting, I think, right? Because, of course, what we see, especially as, you know, you're working through all the lower-level areas in Eriador, right? You know, everything to the, to the west of the Misty Mountains... Everything to the west of Misty Mountains... So from the beginning, you know, from, from the Shire and from Bree... Uh, onwards, right? You are finding the agents and emissaries of, Saur of Saruman everywhere, right? And the power of the White Hand is growing. And so if you look at the map, let's do that. Let's look at the map here for a second. Hang on. Uh, okay, uh, let me uh, accept. I'm going to search for the hobbits. Obviously, I am. Okay, so let's... Um, okay, let's go out from here. Okay, more. Right. So when you just look at the map, right... Uh, and you begin to see Saruman's influence, right? He's based down here at the Gap of Rohan, um, but his influence in the game extends all the way up, not quite so much to Forredwyth. We see mostly them dealing with Angmar up there, and obviously the agents of Angmar are involved coming down from the south, so we have Sauron's indirect influence through his agents up in Angmar, working down from the north. Um, but all of this whole area, Dunland and Enidwyth and most of Eriador, is, you know, we see Saruman putting his feelers out, right? And trying to... Be so Saruman is trying to basically have the west versus the east, right? Him being the ruler of everything to the west, and Sar Sauron being the ruler of everything to the east. Rohan and Gondor are just in the middle, Right? and could easily be crushed by the two of them who would then fight it out between themselves. Um, so it begins to seem like not a totally um, insane plan, right, for, um, uh, for Saruman to, to, to think about doing that. And as I said, I really love the way that we see that happening um, kind of on the ground in the game, especially, of course, right, when you take into account his scheming in Rohan 
uh, through Worm Tongue. Uh, and you know the 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 worm tongue related plots that are going on in Rohan. If he can if he can capture or at least um, uh, uh, you know uh, terminally weaken Rohan, then it's that much easier, right? But there's even a hope that he could gain some real power uh, over at least a, a big contingent of the Rohirrim, so that they, along with the Dunlendings, right, could be in his army, and along with the Brelanders and and all the others that are uh, that are falling under this way up in the Lone Lands and everything else. Um, so anyway, I think it's um, I, I I think it's it's a really cool kind of big picture story uh, that Lotro is building, and it works really well. But again, now returning to my specific question, what would Saruman have made of a settlement of hobbits? What would he have done with a settlement of hobbits in Enidwyth had he found it, right? Um, and I don't know. It's a fascinating question. Exactly the kind of question that lo- makes Lotro so much fun, right? Because it's the kind of question that they ask all the time. Didn't happen in the books, right? But what if it did happen? Given what happened in the books, given what we know about Saruman and his plans and his relationship with the Shire, what would he have done? What would have his plans been for this settlement of hobbits? What do you guys think? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually... Griffith's going to move somewhere. Uh, so we're, we're, he's going he's gonna to continue on. But I, in, in the comments, I would love to hear you guys talk about this. What do you think he would have done? I'm going to try. I'm usually kind of bad about this, but I'm going to try to keep an eye on the comments today uh, to um, uh, to see if you can... Uh, uh, if, uh, to see what you guys come up with. But anyway, okay, we're supposed to, aid the Grey Company. supposed to scour the wood? Uh, it does look kind of dirty. Uh, okay, it's been long since we spoke with each other at the Haunted Inn. Oh, you're at the Haunted Inn, of course, Idrin Fire. How can I forget you from the Haunted Inn uh, of Outaheim? I must confess that I am relieved to be gone from that place. Yeah, lots of ghosts. It was uncomfortable. Uh, and the tragedy, right, of like what could have been and imagining that cute little village as it must have been back before it was destroyed and uh, made into ghosts. Um... But anyway, okay, let's see. Um, Okay, I understand that you were aware of our purpose and would ask for your assistance. Good. It is of utmost importance that our passage remains hidden from the eyes of the enemy, and for that purpose we are here in the Gloom Glens. Good. Well, I scout the path of the Gloom Glens and learn whether any enemies patrol these lands. I doubt it. There are probably no enemies. Return here when you have completed your patrol and let me know. Okay, all right. I can can patrol. All right. Uh, So we're going to... We're going to go. All right, first let's go meet the hobbits, because I think... Oh, yeah, we're just going to be wandering around the Gloom Glen. So um, let's go Let's go find the hobbit settlement, shall we? Doesn't that sound like fun? still an adjustment trying to play with my little splint because like it's hard because my hand is free right and I really want to use my hand like I always have done but uh, my left hand but um, it's not quite free so um, I can't quite uh, use it as I always have done all right we're gonna go this way we're gonna go around the wolf we're gonna remember to stealth ourselves because we're burglars there we go all right. <laughs> Bumble's bounce says Isengard bids five. I have done that quest. That is, was possibly, I think, I think that is the only time, that quest was the only time that I've been playing Lotro and my jaw physically dropped open at something that happened. Um, I think that was the only time that that has that was an awe. It's just an, I can't wait to. Grifflet is totally doing that one. Um, okay, all right. Oh, and here's the Hobbit lamp, just like the one by the statue of Bull Roarer. Okay, right. So we've got the that's in the um, in the path of the Hobbit's deed. Okay. All right, and his name is Hrus Kornkothur. So he's a hobbit, but he has a, a clearly Celtic name, like so using the language, the local language, um, which is rather hobbit-like to conform themselves to the local language. Okay. Um, 
Ooh, Phil asks, does Griffith know how to fish? I don't know if he ever has fished. I can't remember. Do I have a fishing pole? No. No, I don't. I don't think I fish. Um, okay. I don't know as I like your look, Devodiad. You don't know if you as you like my look. What? I'm wearing my fancy clothes. Hang on. Do you like my look now? How about now? Clearly nobody could be scared off by a hobbit wearing a party a cake hat. Is this more inoffensive? Let's see. I'm not sure how someone like he can be of help around here. <laughs> I'm dressed mighty queer for one of our folk. I, fair enough. I am wearing a cake on my head. Uh, uh, and you've never seen me before. Your speech is strange, too. Where did you say you were from? The Shire? Never heard of it. Well, now you won't get far with my folk unless you can prove yourself trustworthy. We're not keen on Devodiad, strangers, around here. I understand. Hobbits back home are just the same. Uh, perhaps if you bring something of importance from your kindred in that Shire place, our mayor might give you a fair hearing. Okay, so I'm supposed to collect expert pipeweed seeds? Do they grow around here? Yeah, they do? No? Where do I get the pipeweed seeds? Do I have to bring them from the Shire, actually? Oh, yeah, I actually have to go. Good. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's uh, one of those um, geographically questionable kinds of quests. All right. <laughs> Fine. I'll go back to the Shire and do that. Um, is this my Mickle Delving one? Yes, it is. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Let's not be hasty. Hi, Mr. Stablemaster. I've not seen your light before. I know, but here I am. Okay. Um, so I'm going to come to the center of your town and find a milestone so that I can use that. Unless I was cunning enough to do this before. Hey, hey I was. Look at that. How about that? Okay. All right. We're going to go get some uh, pipeweed. Because clearly... Uh, this And, of course, this makes sense, right? If you're wondering, like, why don't these hobbits down here... Um, why don't these hobbits down here have any pipeweed? They wouldn't, right? Because you, you may remember that uh, in, uh, in Mary Brandy Buck's, um, you know, Herb Lord of the, sh uh, of the Shire... Hang on a second. I need to go up here. Wait, I need to buy seeds from the farmer, right? Yeah, hang on. Hello there. Let's go to Bree. Farmer's closer to the stable. Um, okay. Uh, so anyway, so remember in Mary Brandybuck's um, appendix, you know, on the herb lore of the Shire, uh, he says that it was in Bree that uh, the that pipeweed was first smoked by hobbits. Uh, so therefore, any hobbits in the south um, who hadn't, you know, made it up so far as Bree would not have uh, learned the art yet, of course, as hobbits call it. Um, and of course, Mary speculates that in Bree, uh, it was through encounters with the Dúnedain, right, you know, with uh, the, the folk of, uh, of Arnor, and then later on, the Dúnedain, um, you know, the wandering Dúnedain, um, who were coming up the Greenway, that they would have, uh, that they would have encountered it. Hello. Okay, we need some expert uh, pipeweed seed. There we go. Okay, so let's, uh, let's buy a quantity. We need 10 of those suckers. No, 500 is too many. We just need 10, right? Bye. Right on. Thanks, man. I gotta go all the way back to Enidwyth now, a ride of several months. It won't take me too long. In fact, I'm not even going to ride. I'm just going to do this. Whoop. Okay. Um, all right. Um, oh, I could have used the horse to the party tree. 
I didn't think of that. Well, see, but the party tree wouldn't have put me right at the stable master in Mickle Delving. See, this is more efficient. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Hrus and uh, show him the wonder of pipeweed. That's great. What a great, what a great quest idea to, uh, but though it's interesting. I mean, he says, bring us something from the Shire, right? So pipeweed, but you know, he's not going to, he's not going to get it, right? So uh, we have to, we have to teach him how to smoke. Hey there. Of what kind are you? Yeah, I call it pipe weed. I smoke it. Yeah, for this gift, receive this in return. You may find it useful one day soon. What? What are you giving me? You're not giving me anything. Sure about the gift. Uh, tokens, but... This long bottom leaf is an amazing thing. The seeds you have given me will be put to immediate use. Well, don't smoke the seeds. You gotta plant them. I've sent words, word to Iolo... Brock to and our Meyer, our, our, our Meyer. Aha! Cool. And he wishes to meet ye. He, he's, he's the Meyer, is he? Okay. Uh, perhaps you can be of further uh, aid, dear folk. Yeah, sure. Meyer Brock to. So see, he's the mayor, but he's the Celtic mayor, right? Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, all right. Neat. Neat. Um, Let's go. Let's meet the stores. Absolutely. And we'll meet the mayor. Uh, excuse me, the mayor. And everybody. What do you notice? Right. Look at those hobbit houses. What do you notice about the hobbit houses? Right away. Right. What just jumps out at you about these hobbit houses. Some things they are similar and some things they are different, right? Round windows and round doors, right? So we can see that that's, a, and it makes sense, right? If, as is speculated in the prologue, <clears throat> that is, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a peculiarity of Hobbit architecture that stems from the time when they lived in actual holes, right? Uh, have we seen any holes? Hundred percent houses so far, right? I think so. Yes, Peter, exactly. Very similar structure, but they're made of bricks. They're made of bricks, so they look just like Hobbit holes. Also, look at this. Look at the roofs. Are these... Can I get up on it? Yes, I can. Are these turf? They look like thatch. I think these are thatched roofs, whereas in the Shire, most of the roofs of the houses are turf roofs. It's actually like soil with grass growing on it rather than just thatch uh, that's been put up on So these are brick houses with thatch on top. Um, the making of bricks, that's... There aren't so many brick houses, certainly. But, of course, you can see how it's made out of the local clay, right? You know, when we see the sides of the hills and stuff and see the color of the bricks, right? You can see it's made out of the local bricks. So, of course, there aren't that many hobbit houses that color because the soil and the, you know, the clay and the shire isn't that color. Um, but, um, but certainly the architectural style is the same, even if the actual details, the actual uh, construction materials aren't the same. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, so where are we going here? Look at this house. Interesting. Notice how this grand house up here, this presumably is the Myers house, right? None of them have second stories. Not even this one. This is a sprawling one-story house. Interesting. Okay. Hey there, Meyer Brochtu. What do you want, Divoniad? Roos told me of the amazing gift you presented to us. We'll plant the seeds immediately. Oh, good. I'm glad you're not smoking them. I cannot wait to smoke the weed. In the meantime, we could use your help. Okay. Happy to give my help to fellow hobbits. My cousin's sister's son's uncle was chased by Bugen. <laughs> my cousin's sister's son's uncle was chased by Bugen? Oh, that is a problem. Okay, uh, a while back our hunters discovered a village of hobbits to the southeast of here. They've gone wild, I suppose from too many years apart from us civilized folk. Interesting. 
as somebody who's been parted from you civilized folk for quite some time, I find that fascinating. Um, we thought to send a peace offering to them as they've none, uh, they've been none too friendly to us when we've come across them in the forest. But Gwyn Kuthonon went missing. Perhaps you would take this peace offering to the village. Perhaps they've gone too wild, but we should try nonetheless as we're neighbors. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go see about this. Hey, Karadog. Nice, well, oh, nice, uh, nice Celtic name there. Ah, uh, you're running short of meat? Collect stag meat? Ugh. Well, I did say no task was too menial. Gotta, you gotta, Griffith's gotta help fellow hobbits, right? Oh, somebody else needs help. What do you need? Furs? Huh. What are your clothes made of? Patched fabric. Got some leather. Got leather shoes. Hey, are all these hobbits wearing shoes? Or just you? I mean, we found a pair of boots. If not, move on. Okay, okay. Um... You must be that northern cousin which brought us the wondrous smoking weed. Yeah, uh-huh. Um... I'm an artist, and I need materials for my work. I make art from the antlers of the white stags. Oh, hey, well, if I'm killing stags anyway, you know, okay. Making a point. Ha uh ha. -huh. All right. Uh, speaking of which, what's up? Uh, uh-huh. I'm looking at feet. Boots. Yeah. Weather, weather booties. Yeah, 100% boot usage. Look at these universally shod hobbits down here in the south. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, I mean, on the one hand, it's funny because the, you know, the, the hairy, leathery feet of hobbits... Um, oh, wait. I'm missing one. And I'm too lazy to go the other way. I'm going to slide down the hill. Okay. Uh, where is she? There she is. Oh, he. Excuse me. Iago! How could I not do a quest from a dude named Iago? You needn't trouble about our difficulties. Oh, you're very soft-spoken for an obvious villain. Um, and what do you need? Board droppings? Really? You need board dropping fertilizer, huh? Okay. And, oh. Violet. Right, not violet, but violet. Well, since you're here, how about making yourself useful? Okay. All right, hang on a second. Is it just me or are these hobbits kind of funny looking? They wear shoes. How else are they different? I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but these hobbits are uglier than Shire hobbits. I mean, what is it about Enidwyth that made them grow up homely? Hang on, let's come over here. A rope belt, okay, and the boots. Wait, and he's bearded. Hang on a second. <laughs> the, like, the obvious thing about this dude's face, I I overlooked. He's got a beard. Yeah, hologro exactly. Facial hair, right? Yikes. Yeah, that's totally not normal. Okay, so that's clearly a sign that there are physiological differences. Um, also, is it just me or did he look less pot-bellied than Shire Hobbits? Wouldn't surprise me a bit if these guys were less well-fed. Oh, he's got a little pot-belly going on. But lots of beards. And look at this, this guy's got, uh, you know, big old Elvis Presley sideburns here. And he does have a pot-belly. Okay. And they all wear shoes. 
Now, as, as I was beginning to say before I forgot that I have lots of, like, menial chores to, to gather. Oh, and Violet wants me to collect marigolds. Right. Okay, right. So, anyhow, um, I, the, the, the shoe thing. Um, the lack of shoes is an element of the story that readers really kind of fixate on, right? It's become one of the really, really famous things about hobbits. Um, and it's, um, uh, it's not that it isn't true, but it's an element of hobbit society that was, oh, hey, Kiriana, how are you? I'm being attacked by a wolf. That's all right. Boy, that's pretty rude when the wolf, like, hides behind my stealth hewer, right? Um, anyway, um, so, again, it's not li like hobbits truly don't... Oh, hey, that's rude. I wanted to take a look at you. Hrost Hig. Really? Oh, sorry, how about I, I should probably carry on with the combat. Um, I was wanting to just take a close look at you, but it's okay. And I guess I should attack this stag over there. As I'm supposed to be collecting meat, and I can talk while I do that. So, um, yeah, so anyway, um, it's interesting. There's evidence that, although Tolkien included that detail um, in The Hobbit, it's like in chapter one of The Hobbit, in his first description of, uh, of Hobbits, it wasn't a, um, a super it clearly wasn't a super important element of his own imagination of hobbits. You can see this from the fact that when he f depicted Bilbo, um, you know, when he painted pictures of Bilbo, he painted him with boots. Um, he's clearly wearing boots in uh, uh, in the, the picture when he's up in the Eagle's Eyrie, the painting that Tolkien did of, of Bilbo in the Eagle's Eyrie. Um, he's wearing boots. And that illustration was included uh, in the published Hobbit. And he got fan mail uh, from folks saying, like, hey, this is inconsistent. Like, it's, you know, you said they don't wear shoes. Um, and, of course, his response was classically Tolkienian, right? He didn't say, like, oops, yeah, I made a mistake about that. No, instead, he's like, oh, actually, there's a good explanation for that. When Bilbo was in Rivendell, uh, he was given a pair of boots uh, by Elrond. Um, you know, for the mountain journey. Uh, so that's why he has a pair of boots in that painting. But he doesn't follow through on that, right? So you'd ex you'd expect then, when um, <clears throat> when Tolkien then went on to write the Fellowship of the Ring, uh, you know, he had the opportunity if he'd wanted to to kind of scale back the barefoot thing um, and uh, make a little bit more of a point of the fact that, um, you know, Frodo and the others uh, put on the boots when it came time to travel in inclement weather and, uh, uh, you know, rough uh, uh, temperatures and stuff like that. Um, but he doesn't do that. Uh, there's no indication that, um, you know, that Frodo and the other hobbits are wearing boots in the snow up in Carothras, for instance. Uh, so... You know, that's, uh, uh, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, he does in the end kind of go back and sort of double down on the barefoot thing, right, with hobbits, the no shoes thing. Um, but it's not an inescapable part of his, um, uh, of his original conception. So, uh, so therefore, I actually, I find it really interesting that they have chosen to make the hobbits here of Enidwaith Shad, right, to say that this is, not something, unlike the round windows and round doors, right? You can see from the, the, the architecture of their houses that there are certain elements of their culture that go way back, right? That that the Shire hobbits and the Enidwide ha hobbits have in common, and that clearly shows a common root. Uh, but there are some things which they don't, and shoelessness seems to be one of those things. So shoelessness, according to the, you know, the, the Lotro theory here, uh, has developed as a cultural tendency among hobbits since at least since they went in the Shire, now I feel like I've got to go back to Bree and look at all the hobbits I see in Bree. Are the hobbits in Bree wearing boots? Um, are Nob and Bob wearing boots at the Prancing Pony? Some of you tell me. You gotta, you gotta tell me if, uh, um, if, if they were, if they were wearing boots. Uh, I see people talking about the bull roarer being bearded. Uh, well, 
Bullroar who took clearly had some testosterone issues, you know, so that wouldn't be shocking uh, uh, under any circumstances. But, um, yeah, they're unshot. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, that's what I thought. Thanks, Jewett's Fire. I was uh, pretty sure that Nob and Bob weren't booted. I thought I would have noticed that if they had been. Um, so, yeah, okay, so therefore we can place it more accurately, right? It's a cultural trait that was developed after they moved north, um, but presumably before the hobbits went into the Shire, unless it spread from the Shire back to Bree, which is theoretically possible, um, but it seems to me a little bit unlikely. Um, yeah, and Pine Leaf, there is that reference that sometimes they wear boots due to terrain, like in the Marish, right? Sometimes in the Marish they will wear boots. Um, there is that reference there. And so that, of course, you know, Pine Leaf, as you suggest, is yet another um, justification, right? Since this is specifically a storish society, uh, that they might do that. But obviously, these guys are going above and beyond, um, you know, the Marish dwellers, as they're all, every single one of them, wearing boots no matter what happens. Um, I see there's a white stag corpse here, which I won't take them rancid meat, but maybe there are antlers that are worth something. Um, oh, okay, see, here we go. I harvest the antlers. No problem. The extraordinary large rack of antlers is without blemish and perfectly symmetrical. Oh, the rangers might be interested in this? This is like above the pay grade of, of like, you know, Hobbit Etsy artists that I'm meant to be supplying. Okay. Um, where are we? What are we looking at here? Okay. I guess I'll just keep wandering about and doing collection quests. And I'll stealth myself so that I don't aggro random wolves. Oh, more board droppings. How exciting is that? But anyway, say I told you I'm, I'm bad at this. Did I get any, any answers, any suggestions about what Saruman's interest would be? Ah, Hologro thinks that the Bogans are what Saruman did when he found out there were hobbits in Enidwyth. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll definitely have to we'll definitely have to look at that. Uh-huh. Okay. Um <laughs> I see Druid's Fire saying earlier that Universally Shot Hobbits is the name of my next Weatherstock band. That sounds good. Um, uh, okay. Um, ah, Phil Boswell is asking, didn't we wonder where the Pale Folk came from in Angmar? Yes, that was, uh, that was not something uh, that we really solved, was it? Um, a disturbing possibility to be sure. Hey, a stag. <laughs> it's hard. Kiriana is doing such a good job of trying to be circumspect and and uh, uh, off screen, but here I am when I'm wandering around doing collection quests like this and just, you know, going in random directions and, and uh, turning here and there. Uh, it sure is hard. I sure do make it hard to stay out of the stay out of the frame. All right. Got some stag meat. Got some antlers. Okay. Oh, there's another stag over there. Hey, look, a marigold. Okay. Finding not only poop, but flowers. This is great. What are those? Oh, sows? Okay. Pick some flowers here. That's great. So, we're gonna definitely check out the Bogans. That's uh, that's one of the really fascinating elements of this whole thing. Um, uh, so we'll we'll definitely take a look at that. I'm not sure though, even without having investigated the Bogan camp um, uh, thoroughly yet, I'm not sure that I can buy that as evidence that Saruman already has found the hobbits in the Ended Wife because just because of the reaction of these hobbits that we found here, 
right? That is to say, they're not. Um, uh, they don't seem to be affected. Um, it's not only that they're still here, right? Um, <clears throat> but they, uh, uh, you know, you'd think, you know, whatever he was going to do, is he going to, like, recruit them? Is he going to exterminate them? Is he going to pervert them? You know, there are any number of horrible things that he could theoretically do um, uh, to the hobbits here. But whatever he did or whatever he attempted to do, you'd think it would have left its mark, right? Um, that the hobbits in that village, remaining in that village, wouldn't be living such a peaceful life, right, as they seem to be. Uh, hang on a second. So what's going on here? A crushed rock and a small skeleton. Not a crushed skeleton and a small rock, but a crushed rock and a small skeleton. Okay, let's see. What's up with this? This boulder seems strangely out of place. It appears to have been thrown down and broken. And judging from the skeleton beneath it, it was not an accident. You should bring this discovery to the attention of the rangers. Okay. All right. A greater mystery. All kinds of mysteries. Is that a footprint? Yikes. Seriously, that's a footprint? How do we, uh, what's the lie down command? Hang on, I can faint, right? All right, I'm oriented the wrong way. Hang on. Turn around, Griffith. I want to measure it. Okay. Yep, that footprint is officially longer than Grifflet is. Okay. But, uh, yeah, don't just lie there in the rain, Grifflet. we got to get going here. Um, so, yeah, if that's a footprint, there's uh, something else going on here, but I don't seem interested in the footprint. <laughs> Sorry, Druid's Fire. Wandering in random directions. Where am I going now? Okay, yeah, this is a fine direction to be wandering in. Oh, look, flowers on top of the hill. Can I get up here? No, don't think so. Just go around this way. I'm sick of stealthing myself and re-stealthing myself after I go through every... Um, hey, a bucket! Small things in Enidwyth. Collect them all. Okay, fine, wolf. I guess you were hovering near that board dropping anyway, so I would have... It would have... We would have come to blows in any case, Mr. Wolf. Okay. Oh, it's lie down. Thank you, Sam. I couldn't remember what it was. All right, here's that marigold. How are we doing? Oh, I'm almost done with board droppings. Having fun exploring. Okay, halfway done with marigolds. Oh, I still need a bunch more boars. Let's see. Or not boars, I mean stags. All right. So, okay, anyway, so as I was saying before, I think that it's unlikely to me, it seems unlikely to me that Saruman has found them. Because um, why would he leave them so undisturbed? Uh, you know, the way that they're all like, why are there strangers? Oh, fine. Look, I'm just trying to pick flowers, people, right? Do you have to be so... Uh, worked up about all this stuff. I mean, neither one of you was eating those flowers. Am I doing you any harm? I really don't think so. Okay. All right. We're making progress with the marigolds. Where are we in relationship to the rangers' camp? Pretty close, right? Some, something like that? Or maybe we're pretty close to something else. What's down here?
Oh yeah, there it is. Couldn't see it through the trees. All right, might as well talk to you while I'm here. Greetings, friend of the Grey Company. A boulder was thrown down. Yep, but from where? The place you describe is far from any height from which such a stone should be thrown down and bro broken. Okay, there's a greater threat in the hills. Probably is. Yeah. The Grey Company is grateful for your aid. Hey, I'm glad to give aid to the Grey Company. You know, always happy to help. Um, concerned. The footprint you find particularly worrisome. Yeah, footprint bigger than me. Yeah. The might and stature of the creature suggests a giant of some kind or a troll, but the footprint seems more bestial. Huh. There are many creatures of this world of which we have little or no knowledge, and such a creature would pose a genuine threat to the Grey Company. So let's track the monster to the lair and dispose of it. Okay. All right. Um, we'll track it down. Slay the giant. That sounds like fun. Oh, yeah. What business have you with the Grey Company? So I found these antlers, and they're too good for the hobbits, so I'm giving them to you. Okay, you've never seen such a large and perfect rack of antlers and the polished sheen of the ivory. This was worn by no natural creature. Ooh, so that was a preternatural stag that was killed by something else. So who killed the preternatural stag and who's mad that it got killed? And are we going to get in trouble from this? Is this like a, hey, let's interfere in like random fairy business and then maybe we'll get them all angry at us kind of situation or what? Um, we've seen many strange things, but always at the edge of our vision. Uh-huh. Yeah, see, that sounds kind of fairy-like to me, too, and I'm not sure we want a part of that. Um, now you wonder if the mysteries were specters of the imagination. Okay. Um, so what are we meant to do? Um, nothing. You're, you're like, never mind, just keep scouring the wood. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll carry on scouring. Um... Let's go south of here because there's apparently stuff south of here. So. Here we go. Heading south. Looking for stuff. Like marigolds! And board droppings. Hooray! My last board dropping. Okay. Ooh, and a stag. What was I interrupted by? Who is interrupting me picking up poop? Seriously, who would want to interrupt me? Okay. White stag, there you go. Excellent. <clears throat> oh man, I got a bunch of stags still left to go. I'm going to be hunting stags forever. At least I can hunt giants at the same time. It's kind of satisfying. All right. Uh, so more marigolds. How are we on marigolds? Yep, keep going this way. We're looking for flowers. Flowers that are not too near to wolves. I see one over there. There's a stag over here. Okay, we'll do that. Hi there. Okay, so... Boy, these all of these stags have really quite impressive racks of antlers. Okay. Oh, there's some marigolds over there. We're getting close with the marigolds. One there. Can we sneak past these wolves to that marigold? Oh, he's going right to it. Come on now. Yes. Okay. So I found mar. Oh, I gotta plant them. That's fine. I found the marigolds. I found the boar droppings. Now I just need the stag antlers and meat. Okay. And I'm supposed to return to where the footprint was. Fine. Okay. So let's go back up there to the footprint, and we'll continue hunting deer. All right. 
Wait, remember? Reveal weakness. Phil, I've completely forgotten reveal weakness. What does it do? Is that this one? Yes. Weakens enemy defenses. Okay. Using this skill will not break stealth. Yeah, that is a good thing to remember. Fantastic. I'm such a bad burglar. I really am. I found a hobbit arrow. Great. What am I meant to do with it? Do I have more quests accumulating in my... I knew it. I knew it. How many bug and spears am I carrying? Not too many. Do I need wolf pelt and tusk quests? No. Might as well at least stop them accumulating in my loot bag. Okay. Maybe they're just academically curious about these. So I can talk to them about those too. Is wolf pelt okay? Maybe you'd be interested in this wolf pelt. Boggin Spears. Spear is evidence of your encounter with a strange breed of goblins in the gloom glens of Enidwyth. While no less aggressive than the goblins of the Misty Mountains, these creatures appeared to be closer akin to men than, than to their mountain-bred brethren. Okay. So they want to know about that, too. Fine. Hey there, Gwyn. You don't have a quest arrow, I can't help but notice. I'll close my bag here. What happened to my, um... Hang on here. Let's consult. Where are we? Um, Enidwyth. Yes. Half a threat. That was the other thing. Deliver the peace offering to the hobbits of the neighboring village. Okay. The neighboring village lies south, right? So I'm just supposed to walk up to them and deliver it. Right. Good, good. Let's do that. That sounds like very great fun. Okay. I think I see it. Oh, and a lovely, peaceful hobbit village it looks. Now, everybody knows how much you can learn about a village based on its architectural style, right? Hoblin Utot. Well, Hoblin is a bit of a uh, uh, hint, right? Oh, I just unstealth, so it's not letting me stealth again. All right, hang on. <laughs> it's true that you hardly have to heal me anymore, Druid's Fire, but that's because I'm over level, not because I'm overpowered or over skilled. Um, okay. So here we are, and the neighboring village of hobbits. So let's look at them. What do we notice? We notice that they're attacking us with spears, but it's okay. Let's see. They have clawed feet with only four toes. They have sharp, pointy, goblinish ears. They're ugly, but let's be blunt. So are the hobbits who live around here. Um, and... They're dressed in leather. They've got sharp teeth. They don't have facial hair. Notice that? Where are you going? Oh, you're attacking my stealth healer. Well, that's rude. But I reckon she'll be okay. Um, sorry, that was really not my intention. What do they keep in backpacks? Guardian swords, huh? Okay, now, so let's look around. We have tents made of some really rough-looking hides put up on sticks. We've got spiky barriers ill put together. 
This really does look like an orc or goblin camp. They're bullies, which is clearly a bad sign. Do they have any kind of architecturally redeeming qualities? They have a corpse. That doesn't count. Let's see. What's up with the corpse? Oh, it's a hobbit corpse. That's real sad. But notice, the hobbit corpse has five toes. Right? Um, given the number of fingers and toes and the claws, I mean, there are clear physiological differences. This is not just like, you know, we have become morally corrupt. These are physical changes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um... That's kind of a nice coat, though. What's that coat made of, do you think? They're all wearing these sort of long coats, except for this one is wearing a vest. Okay, anyway, sorry, I should... Uh, probably defend myself here. Okay. Um, and I should probably also loot the corpse. Yeah, those long coats I find particularly interesting, actually, because it's... Um, it's... Umborth? Huh. That's interesting. Oh, no, not the corpse. I'm not trying to attack the corpse. What do you take me for? Um. Okay. So, oh, by the way, have I satisfied that quest? No? What am I supposed to do? Is this the wrong village? Hang on. Uh, no, I guess this is right. I'm just not to the central area yet. I guess. Oh, yeah. There he is. Excuse me. But now for the real question. These hobbits are actually a kind of goblin. A conclusion to which I was coming. What are their weapons like? Oh, see, I was going to try to pick his pocket, but then I got distracted by his weapons. And look at his coat. It's got cuffs and things. And decorations on the cuffs. And he's got a big machete that he's slashing me with, but you know, these boogans look kind of like the Joker especially when they wear big purple coats like this I love how I guess I didn't find out until I got this far uh, that these were goblins. Hey there! Do you want to help me out or not? Uh, yeah, you've gotten yourself into a spot of trouble uh, we thought these critters were fellow hobbits, but these bogans share no blood with us. I was coming to that conclusion, too. Uh, could you uh, let you out of the cage? Perhaps together we can get away from here. Okay. Hey, I'm great at protecting people. Oh, all right. It's an instance. Sure. Let's do this. Green Corhonon, a hobbit of the Gloom Glens, was captured by the Bogon. Wild goblins owing allegiance to no one. Right. Now he seeks the help of a brave hero to bring him to safety. Owing allegiance to no one. Hey there, oh bearded and overalled and booted hobbit. 
Yeah, let's hurry, because more of them are sure not to arrive. I won't be your dinner? This means a feud. Oh, man. Them's fighting words. Don't kill Gwyn. Look at me, not letting the person I'm supposed to be guarding die. Not even a little bit. Okay, I think it's this way, Gwyn. Good job. You tank him. Hey there. What? You ran away and then turned your back on me? I didn't see that coming. You sure did have the element of surprise on that particular maneuver. I love the red and purple coats, though. See, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm fixating on this. Because there are a couple things, of course, which clearly do connect these Bogan to Hobbits. One is the, their clothing, right? Um... Did that guy just go over there and then die off screen? I'm trying to figure out if that's a, a waistcoat he's wearing. Because, I mean, look at the cuffs of that. If these are goblins, and they made these coats themselves, and pants, they're wearing pants and coats, and possibly vests... And there's really only two explanations I can think of for this, right? One is that they, um, also look at the hair. The hair looks kind of hobbit-like here too. Are there any goblins with head hair? Are they all bald? I don't remember any well-coiffed goblins in my previous travels. So, okay, anyway. Either they're taking the clothes off of dead hobbits, right, and just recycling local stuff, or they're... Sorry. Okay, good. Um, where'd you go? Gwen, where'd you go? There you went. Okay. Oh, good. I'm glad we got to safety. Um... Though, notice, they don't dress like that, do they? I mean, like, the guys are... You'd think there'd be more overcoats with uh, ropes tied around their... Or, I mean, overalls with uh, ropes tied around their waists. Um, and uh, I love the... Hey, you know, real men roll their, roll their jeans up to their knees. That's what I always say. Um, yeah. See, Phil, that's what I was asking, too. Like, do they have hair at all? I don't remember other goblins having hair. Even a little bit. Right? Anyway, it doesn't look like their clothes that they're wearing, so they can't just be taken from them. They're... Obviously, there's nothing else in their culture, right? Their dwellings, their tools nothing else that we can see there that suggests a connection to hobbits, but the clothing and the hair are both very compelling. And of course, the stature and the general body type, they're not scrawny and, you know, with like extra long arms and stuff like the other goblins have. Um, and the ears are pointed, but not like horribly pointed. So the theory that was raised before, could Saruman be crossbreeding goblins and hobbits? Um... Possibly. Possibly. Are these like the uruk of the Hobbit world? Um, again, I come back to, if so, why is there no evidence? Right? How is it that the majority of the Hobbit society here in the Gloom Glens is totally untouched by that fact? Right? Um, I have a hard time believing that that would be the case if... Um, uh, if Saruman were capturing them and then taking them away to be crossbred with goblins. The Uruk low. <laughs> right? You've got the Uruk high and the Uruk low. Um, uh, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, I don't, but of course, I can't, like, okay, so say that he's doing that. 
It's not like he would dress them in fancy coats, right? Like, ah, uh, yes, my, you are the greatest of my creations, and I will put you in, uh... Welcome to Maur Tulhau. Dapper red and purple coats. I mean, let's face it, the Uruk High are not dressed in dapper coats. Oh, you want, you're going to ask another favor? Sure. What's your other favor? I might have worked for you. Okay, if any of us ever thought they were Brother Hob why that anyone ever thought they were Brother Hobbits is beyond me. Would you go to Maur Tulhau and speak with my kinsfolk there? They should know I'm safe thanks to you. Okay, sure, yeah. I'm going to be checking in there again, no problem. Pleased to make an acquaintance. Very good. All right. Uh, what was I looking for before I ran into the Bogan village, though? Which is super interesting. Oh, wait, I don't have enough deer, do I? No, I still need deer. Hang on, let's look at our... Look at all these satisfied quests. Need to plant marigolds. Oh, yeah, let's get the first footprint in there. Yeah, we need that one. And we need some stag antlers. Right, plenty of stag antlers. Okay. So let's head back. Let's head to the ranger camp. And then back to the giants. Stop and examine the outerwear of these boogans. Nice coats with big cuffs. And excellent heads of hair and bare feet. They're bare feet here, right? The Bogans are bare feet. The Hobbits are not, except that corpse. The corpse had no shoes. Hmm. Huh. Let's uh, hope there's no cause and effect relationship there. Okay. Um. Something is near here. Is it the footprint? Right? Close to something or other. No, I think it's the ranger camp. Yeah. Let's go up the hill. Past the pig. Should be rangers behind these trees. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, so I found a bunch of things which you might be as interested in as you were in those hours. Look at these uh, tusks. What brings you to the wild? Strangely the fair. Okay. Uh, how about the wolf pelt? May the Valar grant us swift passage through these lands. You've dealt with our share of brutes. Okay, so you're not really interested in that either. Okay. Glad I'm bringing you all these things that you're not very interested in. Hey, I'm about to go hit level sixty-six. Um. How about the spear? What have you with the, great company? the spear is of goblin make. Is That the spear is of goblin make is not in doubt, but the craft has its differences. As well, there are no markings which indicate which tribe the creatures belong to from your description of them. I ween that these goblins are outcasts distanced from their brethren from the mountains for many generations. We should learn more about them. Huh. Yeah, good job, Griffin. No thanks on the summer festival just now. All right, so we should learn more about them. That's it? You're not going to... Okay. All right. We're starting to run out of time. Um... Hmm. Uh, you guys are speculating about the disappearing hobbits. Let me look over here. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, we found the corpse's book, uh, boots earlier, right? He probably belongs to those boots that we found separately. Good call. Uh, so his little cute little boots were stolen, I guess, and carried off way over to the road. Uh, fine. 
That's okay. JJ says, perhaps they retain enough of their memories to prefer brightly colored clothing, but not enough to fashion it themselves. It's much easier to steal clothing than to steal houses. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe they were crossbred from the Shire. Hobbits, not the locals, said Hologro. Okay, which is why the local settlement of hobbits would be comparatively undisturbed, right? And would not be on the alert and be like, hey, our people have been vanishing. Certainly it's a really small community. Again, I can't imagine they'd still be like, hey, stranger, uh, show us some something fun from the north and we'll accept you implicitly, right? If they were disappearing and we'd have heard about it. Um, you know, and again, not this whole like, there are these neighbors of hobbits. Let's go give them a present. They'd be all suspicious and stuff. Um uh, okay. So, hmm. Oh, um, okay. I don't know why. Do, is there a reason we need to follow up? That's fine. I'm cool with it. Um, I trust you implicitly. Um,. Oh, you're thinking I'm going chasing after giants and you're like, I'm probably going to die if I do that. Is that what you're thinking? Um, man, where are there stags? Pigs as far as the eye can see here. Just want some stags. Is that too much to ask? Bogan hunters in nice jackets all over the place. Okay, let's curve around. We got wolves here. More Bogan hunters. Wait, whoa. Whoa. Why is there an ancient demon goat standing here? Hmm. Don't know. Ah, I see a stag up on the far hill. Oh, hey, look. Here's a closer one. Hi! What shining blue eyes you have. Okay. We're getting there. So is the rock and footprint, right? Yeah, here it is. Okay. The footprints continue off to the south. All right. We'll go south and hope for more deer. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this giant situation. All right. Wolf. Um, wolf. Wolf. Okay. Did he stay on the path? Oh, demon goat. Want to avoid him. Oh, no. Dead deer. Outraged pig. Footprint. Oh, there it is. I didn't even see it. Heads west. All right. Let's go around here. Or do we just head down here? I guess we just head down here. Okay, fine. Here we go. We're stealthing. We're following. I see a footprint. Okay. All right. Here we go. Continuing west. Off we go. Hey there, Kiriana. You're following the footsteps too, huh? Let's see. Where'd he go? Where's the giant? Oh, hang on. I see a stag. Ah, there's a footprint. To the southwest. 
But first, I have unfinished business with venison. Does one ever truly finish one's business with venison? Okay. A little bit of venison here. Okay, I thought for a second that tree was dead, which I was going to take as a very, very bad sign. Oh, a cave! Oh, caves are fun. This is a tiny cave! How did that giant get in here? Oh, okay, we can't do that. All right, no problem. Okay. All right, Grifflet, you got this. The terrible beast known in legend as the Grey King has long haunted the passes of the Gloom Dens. Really? Waiting in secret to throw boulders down upon the heads of the unwary. Really? Well, how did we learn this lore? I wonder where he learned all of his lore. Who calls him the Grey King? The Hobbits? The Dunlendings? You know, I the Grey King. Cool. But puzzling. Okay, you wouldn't think I'd have to search this carefully for a giant. Hello, Mr. Giant. Where are you? I don't know where you are. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oops, not what I meant to do. No, I can't get through here. Oh, there he is! Wow. Oh, you're fading in and out. That's why I didn't see you. Wow. Goat's horns, huh? Like ram's horns? And a... What is that thing? Is it connected to the demon goats? Is this the progenitor of the line of demon goats? And let's not think about how he progenited, pro pre, you know, begot it. Um... Wow, so he's fading in and out, suggesting that he's, what, partially of the spirit world and partially of the world of flesh? He doesn't have a tail. Humanoid body and musculature, but with the, that ram's head thing going on. much more sort of demonic than I was expecting. I was expecting a giant. But this guy is not just a giant, especially the fading in and out. Huh. Interesting. Um, okay, hang on. So let me... Uh, let's, uh, let's have some food. Pause for a little snack. We'll go after the Grey King here. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Now we're going to sneak up. And we're going to pick his pocket. No! Well, it's true that he doesn't have pockets. Ah, gotcha. Oh, you bit me. That is nasty. Oh, boy, you went down easy. Um, okay. That's it. Killed the Grey King. 
Made the way safe for the Grey Company. Coincidence, right? Grey King, Grey Company, I don't know. Nor do I know how he got through this. Seems like it would have been a bit of a squeeze. <laughs> Hobbit Postman says he left his pockets in the other loincloth. Um, okay. Hey, it's nighttime. All right. Where's that nocturnal quest, Kiriana? Does it have something to do with that demon goat? I remember that there's a nocturnal quest around here somewhere. I don't remember where it is. Okay, let's see. Ooh, and I'm out of time. I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to get all of my stags. That's disappointing. Oh man, I still need four more stag antlers because they're not dropping every time. to nine meat, but only seven. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. I think I'm going to head back to the rangers, and then I'm going to have to sign out, because I am over time. Ah, uh, okay. I see. Kiriana, I get a different version of it. I'm with you. So is that wolf with me, apparently. No, looking for stags. Not seeing them. Yeah, hold your horses, Mr. Wolf. There he is. Okay, um, uh, oops. Okay. I'm going to go back to the rangers, tell them about the Great King. Hey, yeah, I killed the dude. Welcome and well met, my friend. You never heard of such a creature as you described. Me neither. It was really interesting. Um, it did seem to pose a threat uh, to the local hobbits, of course, one would add. The Grey Company is grateful for your aid. Oh, now you're sending me off to Hlanuk. Well, that's where I was heading next. i got to finish up with the hobbits here. but Okay. Um, so that's fine, Mr. Ranger. I'm going to hang out here. Um, and then... Uh... Okay. All right, so I'm going to hang out here. And then... Well, so what do I... I only just need a couple more stags, right? And then I can go back... And finish up with the hobbits back there. And I rescued the guy and we explored the Boogan camp and everything. So, excellent. All right. Um, very good. Okay, so we'll finish this up. I'll finish this up next time. And then we'll head down to Hlanuk and see what we find down there. Uh, as I said last time, I'm gone again this coming week. Um, I'm going to be gone next week. And then I'll be back for the three weeks in a row after that. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to be able to stream next week. So Griffith will be back two weeks from today, and then he'll be here for three weeks in a row. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing three weeks in a row with you. I know I've been in and out a lot recently with my travels. Um, thanks to Druid's Fire for uh, 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 keeping my slot warm for me here uh, while I'm gone. So you can, uh, you can uh, 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 join Druid's Fire uh, next week. And yes, Hologro, we still need need to get uh, uh, Wigand uh, his horseshoe, uh, because I I've learned my lesson that horseshoes are like the most important thing. Um, so we'll totally do that. All right. Thanks very much, everybody, for joining me, and I will see you guys in a fortnight. Bye now.